say? Communion. So I'm to the other one got communion. So I don't know. to write something down. But as the age always happens, the good Lord says, ah, guess what? I'm going to change the subject when you get feeling. So I was going to speak about how the Pharisees used to try to avoid when Christ came down and said, but this is the way we're going to do it. But no, we're going to change that. Is that on? Yes, it is. Oh, okay. Sorry, no. I've turned it up. You turned it up. You turned me up. Well, no, no, no. I thought it was being said before. You've got a very quiet voice, don't you? Yeah. Oh, yeah. We're really holding up here, mate. Not down there. Oh, we're about there. That's better. Yes, that's better. That's it. Okay. Don't listen to them, though. Well, don't listen to them, I'll listen to you, Pastor. Anyway, so. My community today is, is, it's pretty basic, it's quite easy, it's just the true story of Christ. It says, come as you are. It doesn't matter if you wear a suit, a tie, or footy shorts, or whatever. It doesn't matter what footy team you support. It doesn't matter what your background is. He loves us as we are. It doesn't matter if you're rich, poor, black, white, Fat, skinny, bald, hairy. <laughs> but he came to save me. He's jealous for me. He's jealous for Fee. He's jealous for Kelvin. He's jealous for Kerry, Lisa, Chris, Kerry, Aunty Ray. She's jealous. He is jealous. Can you turn that down yourself? Yeah. He's jealous for each one of us that he has saved, and he wants more saved for him. That's why Christ came, because we were the way we were going, he just wanted to start, he wanted to take it all the way, start fresh, go right back to the garden and start again. But for Christ to come while we were still sinners, to be able to say to us, Come who are broken, who are heavy laden, who are weary, and I will take your burden from you and I will give you more yoke, which is like and easy to carry. Now the Pharisees didn't really like this because they had the control. They used to be able to say, well, no, you're too poor, or you've got, you've got a disease so you can't come in. Christ touched the lepers. He healed them. He healed the blind. He healed the sick. He healed the lame. And still the Pharisees wouldn't believe him. So that um, when it came time for the betrayal, Christ knew it was going to happen. He knew that had the, the prophecies had to be fulfilled. That he would be taken to the scribes and the Pharisees and, and scrounged. And that when he went to the cross, he knew he'd have to take that cross. He'd take up the cross. He takes up that cross for me, so I don't have to take it. He takes it up for Greg, so he doesn't have to take it. He takes it up for Gerard, so he doesn't have to take it. That's a big weight off my shoulders. To be forgiven like that, that's the best gift in the world. I've got a beautiful wife, I've got a beautiful family. To be forgiven for my sins in an instant, there is no bigger gift than I can receive. Yeah, the Last Supper, he said, This is the last time that I'll eat with, I'll uh, taste the fruit of the vine. I'll taste the fruit of the vine until I can it, until I return. Yeah, and they're going, What are you talking about? He goes, huh? The time has come for me to be delivered up that I be maybe rose up. So if we can pass out the elements, please.
So as we take the bread, we just give thanks to Christ for his body broken, beaten beyond, beyond recognition. It's the cross. And as we take the cup, we just give thanks for Christ taking our cross, that we may carry his white yoke, that his blood be spilled on that cross for us. <laughs> 